Nira, a 2,000-year-old city remarkably preserved in the middle of the desert, and now in the hands of ISIS. The agony of Syria's three-year war just got worse. Activists say ISIS captured the Syrian city of Tadmur. Many of its residents will likely flee in terror to escape the public executions that the group directs against its opponents. In addition to the incalculable human cost of this conflict, there are now fears ISIS may unleash its wrath on the nearby ruins of Palmyra. I visited Palmyra in 2007 as a tourist on a bus. It was an astounding sight, a cultural and historical oasis of ancient Greco-Roman columns, arches, temples, and an amphitheater. This caravan town had been an important stop on trade routes that once linked Rome to East Asia. Seeing it left me humble. It was a reminder that we are but small chapters in a much larger, longer human story. And now this treasure stands at the mercy of an army of marauding nihilists. ISIS reveled in the destruction of Sumerian statues in Mosul, the bulldozing and dynamiting of a 9th century BC Assyrian palace in Nimrud. ISIS aren't the only group that have committed sins against world heritage in Syria. In their battle for power, rebels and regime forces damaged the ancient bazaar in Aleppo, fought over the crusader castle Crac de Chevalier. Both rebels and black marketeers looted and sold off other ancient treasures. But ISIS takes this destruction to an entirely new level. Another piece of our collective history may be on the verge of being irrevocably lost. Ivan Watson, CNN. Let's get right to CNN senior international correspondent Nick Payton Walsh, who joins us live from Beirut, Lebanon. Nick, what's the latest on the ground in Palmyra? What are you hearing? Well, we're seeing a social media video that's emerged showing pretty deserted streets to some degree, but also uh, people gathering in one center center, bewildered, it seems, by the new ISIS fighters who've come in and uh, chanting Islamic State amongst some of them. Now, this is obviously uh, the beginning of ISIS's presence inside that city. They are, according to eyewitnesses, going door to door looking for regime soldiers, but also at the same time being relatively nice to the inhabitants of that town. That is a common tactic where they start off soft and then get sort of more brutal with the regime they want to in place as time goes by. But all eyes on the ruins on the outskirts of the city. Uh, Jake, I mean, this is something dates back to first century, uh, uh, and it's where Roman traders used to mingle uh, with rem in remnants of the Persian empires there. I mean, quite stunning beauty that now risks potentially being under the sledgehammers and gunpowder of ISIS if they do uh, the kind of year zero activity that they normally espouse and have done in other antiquities around Iraq, Jake. Nick, as you know, in addition to the human toll, uh, there is an alarm being sounded by the UN and other groups about Palmyra's precious antiquities and the historical sites saying they could be looted and destroyed. Is anyone guarding them at all? The video we saw shows very little presence at all uh, of regime. Obviously, they fled, but anything else really seems very limited too. So I imagine most people are going to have free reign uh, crawling over those antiquities. Now, we know that some were evacuated potentially in the previous days, but it must be a limited job, frankly, the regime could pull off, uh, given the other concerns they clearly had in terms of simply defending their own lives. So yes, it is open territory for them, unlikely they will sell them or hoard them. I think, in given past history, they prefer the shock value of simply destroying them. Jake. Nick Payton Walsh in Beirut.